Hi, and welcome to another episode of Dealing TV q and I'm Mike, and I'm here with Dave. And we're here to take your questions and answer them right here on the show. If you point your browser to www.dealingtv.com, you'll find a little web form that you can fill out and uh, submit your question for us to answer right here That's right. on the air like these people did. Uh, today, we're going to do a little show and tell stuff for you. Oh, can't so, wait. so that'll, that'll be exciting. <laughs> All right. Right? Okay, so our first question comes from Sherard in Phoenix, Arizona. And he says he has a network with two computers set up on it. One of them is an Apple and one of them is a PC. And he says his download speed from the Internet is great, but his upload speed is slow. So he wants to know uh, how to configure his router to fix that problem. Right. Well, that's not actually a problem with any of his hardware. Right. Um, that's actually an issue he has to take up with his ISP. His Internet service provider is actually who dictates the speed on which he downloads and uploads. Right, so what he has is called an asynchronous uh, internet connection. That means the download speed is much greater than the upload speed. And if you wanted the speeds on both upload and download to match, you would need to contact your service provider and get what's called a synchronous internet connection. That's right. And, but, I, you know, I'm going to put a little caveat on there that it is more expensive because the synchronous uh, connections are usually for like small businesses. The reason why you would want all of that upload speed is for, you know, if you had a web server running, you know, that was serving up files and things right. like that to right. people. Um, so a synchronous uh, internet connection is what you're looking for. That's correct. And yes, the D-Link router will handle that. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> then we have uh, Barry from Warwick, New York. Uh, it says he has uh, two desktop computers in different rooms and one cable modem. And he wants to know if it's correct to assume that he can hook up one computer directly to the router and then use a wireless adapter in another computer and be able to use them at the same time. Right. Well, I mean, he's contacted the right guys. That's what we kind of specialize in. So uh, what he would actually need is just, like you said, a router, his cable modem, and one card. Right. And his other PC can just connect directly into the router. Using, using a good old, you know, Ethernet cable. Um, you know, uh, it's uh, it's not actually a, a bad question to ask because back in the old days we used to refer to them as wired slash wireless routers on the packaging, but now it's just become you know assumed that they would have wired ports right. as well as the wireless, so they're just called wireless uh, you know routers. So that's that, it. That, that'll take care of Barry. Uh, okay, so then Michelle uh, from Montreal uh, wants to know from A to Z how to connect a router you know just to, in the in the basics uh, so so what we have set up here for our show and tell portion is a, a basic DSL connection right so what you would have is coming out of the wall is a telephone line going into a DSL modem or it would be a coaxial line like what you have in your uh, uh, cable TV cable TV uh, coaxial going into a cable modem so those are the only two places where it really differs. Right. Uh, then your DSL is going to be connected into power, and you're going to have an Ethernet cable running from the DSL modem to the uh, to your computer. So in this case, we're pretending this is a desktop computer. Right. Um, now, if the connection going from your DSL modem to your computer is a USB cable. You need to switch it to Ethernet. If it doesn't have Ethernet on it, then you need to contact your Internet service provider and get a DSL or cable modem that has an Ethernet port on it. Now, the reason why that's important is because that's what the router is going to use. So now let's grab our router. That's the, the DGL 4500, the new gaming router. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it in between the computer and the DSL modem. So. What you want to do is before you get, is unplug your DSL or cable modem from the wall so it's no longer powered up. Then unplug the Ethernet 
from your computer and plug it into the WAN, WAN port. It's the single port that's off by itself. These are your LAN ports over here. They're all grouped up. And this is your, your WAN port. So that would connect there. All right. Now, we're going to take another Ethernet cable, which is normally provided with your router. And we're going to connect it into one of the LAN ports. These are all where all the computers can go is into one of these four ports. So you're just going to connect that baby in there. Plug it into the back of your computer. Right. And then now this is going to plug in to the back of your computer. I can do this without looking. Right? An expert. <laughs> yeah, find out where the hole is. There it is. Okay. Now, we're going to plug these in in a specific order. Because both of our router and our DSL modem, cable modem, are unplugged right now. The reason being is cable and DSL modems tend to have a little memory on them. They remember that it was your PC that was connected to it. Right. This has what's called a media access control number or a MAC address right. right, on it. And this is tied to this or the cable modem. So what you do is by powering it down, it's going to lose that memory. And now it will accept something new connecting to it, which will be the MAC from the router. The router. So what we want to do is power up the DSL modem first by plugging it in. Its lights will go through a, a thing, a process of connecting to the internet service provider. And then we want to power on the router. Then this will talk to the DSL modem, which is already connected to the ISP. We'll get an IP address. And the last thing to do is fire up your desktop computer, which will now get an IP address from the router. From A to Z, that's how you <laughs> connect up a router. From the hardware perspective. Yeah, from the hardware perspective. If you need something on how to configure things via software, we have a lot of other Dealing TV Q&A episodes that will help you walk through that. Or you could also check out blogs.dealing.com where uh, you know people in the company have written blogs to help you through this stuff. And if you have another question, go to www.dealingtv.com and fill out our web form, and we'll answer your question right here on the uh, next episode. That's right. All right, that'll do it for this time. Thanks, Dave. Well, thanks, Mike.